Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think based on the time zones, it should be afternoon for everyone. If that's not the case, then good morning or good evening where applicable. My name is Odwan Tsikam Tembu, and I'll be your moderator for today. I am one of the supervisors that is supervising this year's online Web Skills competition. I'm also a program officer for the Web Skills Foundation and working for the Department of Water and Sanitation in South Africa head office as one of their young professionals. We are so happy to have you today to be joining us for the first one ever online Web Skills in South Africa, but it's not the first one in the country. This is the fifth one, and you will hear more of this later on when you're getting presentations from my, phone, um, from my fellow colleagues from the foundation. Um, so without wasting any time, I would like to give a chance to Ms. Maya Verena, who's very awesome, from the Department of Water Sanitation, to do a welcoming on behalf of the department, who, by the way, are one of the key partners for this event. Without them, I think we would have had a lot and a lot of hiccups along the way. She is also going to be touching on the importance of intergenerational dialogue um, for water and partnership for the web skills. Over to you, Ms. Maya Verena. Thank you, Otwa, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, like I said, here we are at last. <laughs> we what nearly a year to the date. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the South African Word Skills 2021 online competition finals presentation. The unique networking and knowledge exchange Wet Skills events has been organized in more than 15 countries all over the world, inclusive of South Africa, the Netherlands, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Morocco, and many others. This is the fifth event in South Africa, as Otwa has so uh, politely indicated, and we are honored that it also formed part of the Wet Skills 10 years Jubilee events, or a bit a few months late. Uh, a bit later than never. Yeah? These finals recognize the very best ideas of 14 South African, one Zimbabwean, and six Dutch young people for water related case studies. They have learned about local environmental water and social problems and developed project proposals to solve very specific problem areas. Most importantly, each of these young people have, have, people have put their knowledge and experience to work for their community by helping to protect the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land we live on. And through the inter oh, yeah, the English, the intergeneration, uh, we, they have been assisted by experts in, a, in the field that has been there for a much longer period than most of them. And I think that that would have helped them to also bring in their experience and have that mix and come up with a project that I'm sure that all of them would be winners with. This year, we have three project presentations. Sustainable Empowerment of Local Community for Cleaning Rivers, the Look, See, Do, a virtual reality experience for capacitating staff, and I would really like to look at this one specifically because this is a challenge, I think, for all of us that like to speak to little black boxes on a computer all the time, and then swamp-friendly water hyacinth harvesting. We are very proud of each and every one of you for this outstanding work you have done. This is not only a competition. You know that this is more than that. We wish you all the best for your project presentations that's going to happen in a few minutes' time, and I'm sure you're all sitting on edge at the moment. Today, we are honoring winners both, both past and present from the various wet skill competitions all over the world. Because of you, we are fortunate to celebrate the 10 years, 10 years jubilee, and we trust that the management team and the competition will go from strength to strength, Yuan. Let me welcome and thank also the supervisors, the mentors and case owners who have supported and guided these talented young people as they wrestled around solution and ideas over the past nine days. I know sleep has been very little. I also welcome the jury members and thank you for dedicating your time to evaluate the, and evaluate the project presentations today. Allow me to welcome and thank as well specifically the wet skills management team the Netherlands Ambassador, members of the Embassy team in South Africa, the Special Envoy for International Water Affairs for the Kingdom of Netherlands, and the South African Wet Skill Coordinating Team, who under very difficult circumstances ensured that this online event materialized and came to completion. I want to thank my own team from our Department of Water and Sanitation Learning Academy as well for the efforts and support for 
this, the, the, the coordinating team. I also want to thank all our sponsors for the corporate sponsorship for this competition and specifically for the finals. And allow me as well to thank the Blue Deal who sponsored all the cases presented today as a challenge to the participants. And finally, most importantly, let me thank the participating young people for their extraordinary efforts to ensure that our environment is cleaner, safer and healthier for future generations after today. I am confident that you will be making great contributions to your communities and to South Africa through your project proposals. And now let us proceed to the online presentations of the finals of the South African Wet Skills 2021 competition. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Maya, for that. And I can tell you on behalf of everyone that everyone is clapping. I can imagine some of the things. When you are part of West Coast for so long, you can start seeing things that people are doing, especially after this year's competition. We can see the energy clapping and smiling. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Maya. And indeed, we thank the participants for all their hard work and their contribution to the water sector. I think now I could say for me to say this competition has started. Um, because we've got the nice words of welcome from Ms. Mayer, and we are officially on, as everyone would say, in the sector, the young professionals. Therefore, just to take it down the road that we've been going through with this online version of West Coast South Africa, I'll hand over to my colleague, the awesome Ms. Fiona, who will briefly talk about the Wet Skills um, South Africa 2021 program, and also show you a little piece of what we went through through our Wet Skills video. Over to you, Ms. Fiona. Thank you, Adwa. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to our West Coast final program. Um, my work has been made easier by my colleague Adwa and also by Mrs. Uh, Verna Meyer. Um, they've already mentioned that this is our fifth event with South uh, Africa, but it is the first uh, online event that we have done with South Africa. In January, we had our first online West Coast ever event with India, um, but we still had a lot to learn during these past two weeks. Um, we kicked off on the 25th of February with our first uh, getting to know each other um, uh, day uh, for the teams to meet the case owners, for the team to get to know each other. Um, on the next day, we had the brain hurricane where the, the teams had to meet uh, a lot of experts, uh, have very short, very intensive talks with uh, each of them, and then proceed to work on their cases. So it was a, a quite a challenging program. Normally, West Coast is a challenge, challenging program. Um, but it's uh, when it takes place live, um, of course, you have a lot of more social moments. We do a lot of uh, uh, team building activities. We go on the field um, and we have tried to replace these moments during our online West skills also with a bit of uh, socializing uh, after the work hours. Um, and we realize it has been um, uh, demanding from the participants to spend so much time in front of the screen. Uh, but I hope it's also going to be rewarding. And before we go into seeing the results of these last two weeks, um, I would like to, to show a little movie that will, will um, exemplify how the, the flow, uh, the workflow has been going on in the last uh, almost two weeks. Um, Ms. Meyer has already mentioned that we had six uh, Dutch participants, um, 15 participants from uh, South Africa with um, at least one of them born in and originally from Zimbabwe. Um, the movie that I'm going to show to you is going to be a, a shortened version of our after movie. Unfortunately, we didn't have uh, sufficient uh, um, time in the program to show uh, the movie that's now more than 10 minutes long. So we had to shorten it a bit. If, you, if uh, some of the participants don't find themselves in the short version, please rest assured we are all there and it will be uh, visible after the event on our official West Coast channel. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the official after movie of Wet Skills South Africa 2021, the online edition. On behalf of the supervisors, Joanna, Otwa, Pomelo and me, Peter, I want to thank you for watching this movie. On behalf of West Coast Foundation and all partners involved for this online event this year in West Coast South Africa 2021, we'd like to say thank you to our case owners for providing us with challenging um, cases, tackling issues in the water sector in Southern Africa. 
Special thank you to Blue Dot South Africa together with the Duct, which is Duzi Umgeni Convention Trust, for providing a case with Team One, which was focusing on sustainable empowerment of local community on cleaning rivers. This project was focusing on initiatives on the Umsunduzi River. Secondly, we'd like to thank Jump Loon for partnering with the Blue Dot South Africa for providing a project working on the Crocodile River, which is all about Look See Do, which is a virtual reality experience on capacitating staff. And lastly, a project from Blue Dot South Africa looking at the Val River, which was focusing on swamp friendly hyacinth um, harvesting. Thank you so much to our case owners, and we know these solutions from the teams are very innovative, scalable, and sustainable. This movie has been completely made with the help of our amazing participants. I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, my name is Zintlembega from the Enviropol Group. It's been a fantastic journey with my teammates. We actually worked well together, uh, despite the network challenges that we had during our sessions. Uh, however, the different time zones did not really affect us as we were able to plan our work accordingly. Thank you. Hi, I'm Aldo Magigi from PVR Solutions Team 2. Well, working with young intelligent people is not as easy. But as long as you find a common ground to address issues, understanding each other, teamwork, right? That's what Team 2 was all about, understanding each other. And working remotely in different time zones, that wasn't an issue because it's just one hour apart. The only issue was, hey, hi, are you there? Can you hear me? Mute. That's the problem with working remotely. I am Vessel from Team 3. And working in different time zones was not a problem for our team. However, it was a challenge to get on the same page in an online environment. Although our consultations were online, we could see the cultural differences in the way we worked. I really enjoyed seeing that. Sometimes the South African team members had to slow down the Dutch team members to keep the overview, and at other times the Dutch team members had to point out to the South African team members that tasks had to be done before a certain deadline. We tried to make use of each other's strengths so that our teamwork went satisfactory. My overall with skills experience. Oh man, oh man, what a tough time, yet a very interesting time because you come together with people from various backgrounds doing various things, various expertise, and you have to come up with an idea or a project where everyone's idea matters. You can't just shut down anyone. You have to take everything that comes through and work with it. So my overall with skills experience, besides my initial technical difficulties, because it's online, um, it's an amazing experience and it's something that, that I'll do over and over again as it continuously challenges me to strive to be better. Hi, I'm Kensani Shizumba from South Africa under the Kuwina team. I was very skeptical about the program, but it turned out to be the best program that I've, I've attended and thank you so much to our supervisors for being there for us, for the advices and for being able to communicate uh, with us when we have questions and not forgetting the different experts that have been invited to give us advice in terms of how we can structure our pitch and also our poster. The experience was very great and I had fun. Tandi Lizo Bengeza, I'm part of Team One. Great experience with great people. This is an important platform to provide solutions to our water challenges. Amazing, exciting, informative. The first time yet an all-round experience. I literally enjoyed every day with this year's participants in the World School Survey Challenge. And the first three terms you described that are informative, challenging and convivial. My name is Busiso Kubo. Hi, this is Rutendo from Group 3, Kowina. I love the experience with Wet Skills South Africa Online 2021. I get to meet with young professionals from all over the world who love to show and express their innovative ways of solving this water crisis that is stressing all over the world. It has just been great 
awesome networking on point and getting to work hard and stressing. I love it. Hi everyone, my name is Sharon Sitedi from Team One. The most strange thing that happened during West Coast 2021 was having a visual social. Imagine having to socialize with people while the other person is in the bedroom, the other person is in the kitchen, one is in the bathroom. They were so strange. I am Mahala Masha. I'm from Team Three, the Karina team. So, on day 11, technology showed us flames. People couldn't unmute themselves, they kept on calling Oro's name, they were speaking a language we didn't understand. So yeah, that was very confusing and very strange to me. Hi, I am Ulinda Lwantrofu. Well, the weirdest thing for me was finding out that we had to work on weekends. No, that's illegal, at least in 150 countries. Nope, that should never have happened. Paul Notenboom. The strangest thing that happened was somebody playing his pitch during a team's meeting and some of us thought he was really talking, so we were... Good day, Wet Skills, South Africa. My name is Tafam Khosetal and I'm in group number three. The most interesting thing that happened was going to the Blast Box Great Wetland to collect data on the water hyacinth project that we that we are working on. Thank you. I'm Ger van Muisinkel from Group Two. I worked on the VR case study. What I found really exciting about this project is that I got to work in an international context and meet lots of new people and learn about the South African water sector. everyone my name is Kimara and I belong to team one case one for me personally the most exciting experience that I've had during this Red skills program is the fact that I could engage and interact with people all across the world hello everyone my name is Karabo and I'm from team two um, and my life gained lesson from the weight skill experience is that you will always have challenges, but challenges always have solutions. All you need to do is put your mind to it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Yana from T3. What I learned in this program is that you can achieve anything you want in a short amount of time, really short. Uh, but with a lot of people and with a lot of experts around you, you can do everything what's coming up and you can do everything you put your mind on. Hi, my name is Bora Mutola from Group 3 Kowina. Life lessons learned from word skill is that sometimes you have to admit that you don't always have to have the last say. It's okay to admit that your teammate has a better opinion or fact. It also saves you time if you're chasing deadline like we always do with weight skills hi my name is wendy dube a member of team two in the weight skills 2021 competition one of the most valuable lessons i learned during this competition was patience whether it was for bad wi-fi connection or when team members had disagreements we'd like to thank all the experts all the guests and all the speakers for your invaluable contribution in this edition of weight skills and we would also like to send a special thank you to all our partners for making this edition a success. Thank you. Okay, I think it went well. <laughs> I hope you were uh, all able to see it without, um, I don't know, too many problems. And uh, I'll hand back uh, to Adwa. Okay, thank you so much, Yona, for that. And like Yona said, the full version of the film will be available on the Web Skills um, website, which I can definitely promise you is going to play much smoother um, than that. Um, and with everyone who knows how Web Skills goes, they know that we normally really do have exciting videos. But guess what? This was the first time it was online, and we still managed to put to, um, something together from wherever we were. 
Um, just a quick announcement that the, if you want to drop um, a chat or a text to us, please make sure that on the chat you select um, panelists and attendees. Otherwise, if you just send it to panelists, then you won't be able to greet your friends who are also there part of the chat. So now with that being said, I think it is that time which everyone is anxiously waiting for um, to get to the business of today. Um, but before we do that, I will first start by wanting to introduce our awesome, awesome jury for today, which I will allow each jury member, by the way, I'll be your jury member because I'm going to be giving you one minute each to briefly introduce yourself and I'll be timing your pitch of your introduction. So with that, I'll be starting with Hank. Hello, Hank. Can you hear me? Yes, here I hey. am. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you, Odwa. And it's great to see you all. And uh, uh, also, again, thanks to everybody uh, for uh, uh, putting all your commitments and efforts in. Uh, it's amazing, uh, I hope. Uh, the movie showed the challenges you faced. And uh, normally, you're together uh, in a space, uh, in a city, in a place, uh, uh, in a region working across and running around. Um, and now you, like all of us, have to do this behind screen. So uh, kudos up front uh, for uh, keeping your spirits high uh, and your dedication. Uh, I saw the, uh, uh, some of your, you know, already of the information, so I'm very curious. Um, let me go to the, uh, uh, wait. <clears throat> The blah, 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 where am I? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, we have three pitches, right? Um, uh, yes, Hank, we have three pitches, which you'll be hearing shortly. For yeah. now, I am just introducing the jury members yeah. and you are the first jury member. Uh, okay. So, if you're done, I'll now like to I'm go I'm done. To yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Wet Skills okay. Ambassador, Dutch Ambassador yeah. for Water. Really look forward uh, to hear your pitches. Yeah, thank yes, you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hank. Um, Hank has been with Wet Skills for a very long time. Um, and he's one of the awesome people that we are lucky to have um, in the Wet Skills Foundation. Next, I would like to ask Ellen to briefly introduce yourself. Yes. Hi, I'm Ellen Pfeiffer. I work at IHE Delft. Um, well, I'm, I'm also very proud to be here as a juror, uh, for one, because my team is part of the uh, Afri Alliance project. So we are, I think, a formal partner of Wet Skills. So every success is, uh, of, of yours is ours. The second thing is that last year I actually hosted two case studies. So I have worked with teams like you. I have no idea how you pulled this off online because what happened in the group was quite amazing. Uh, so congratulations for that. In terms of what I do is I'm a researcher on citizen science, uh, in particular uh, citizen science and community engagement uh, in Africa. So I do spend time well, when there is not a pandemic happening, uh, sitting under trees in Africa, designing smartphone apps with communities. So some of these pitches uh, and, and some of the problems discussed in the pitches sound very familiar. So I'm very, very excited. Okay, thank you so much um, for that. We're also excited to have you here. Our third jury member is Ashton. Hi, thanks, Odo. Uh, it's so good to be here. Um, it's a good day to everyone. I hope you all well. Uh, my name is Ashtin Bofu. I am a senior water sector analyst at uh, CleanCap Sector Development Agency. I'm also the current uh, YWP uh, chair. Um, long term relationship with Word Skills, even before myself with YWP. Um, thank you for the invitation, and I'm looking forward to the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Ashtin. We're glad to have you. Um, our fourth um, to remember, it's Dr. Naidu. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here as a jury member. And I got a lot of pleasure, a pleasure as well as uh, presenting the other day to some of the uh, colleagues in the session. Um, my job is business development and innovations. So you'd ask yourself, why are you talking about business development and innovations? Exactly what you're trying to do here. 
you're trying to take knowledge and and make it work and transform society and allow it to benefit society. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Naidu. And thank you also for the awesome presentation that you gave the participants last week. And lastly, our fifth jury member is a fellow colleague, uh, Mustacia. Thank you, Johan and Adwa, for inviting me to be a jury member. It's always very exciting listening to what uh, the youth have um, come up with innovative solutions. I think they support us in developing our own policies and work. So I'm really looking forward to the three teams and their, and their proposals. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mustacia, for that. And with the jury members that we have, I think everyone was able to see that it's nice and diverse um, and they'll be able to look exactly as to what needs to be looked at for your pitches today. So we will now go straight to our pitches. Um, because this is an online event, I think I, I have to actually mention this so that everyone understands. Normally, all this will be having people pitching on the ground with a big screen clock counting them down and obviously myself at that time from our director stopping them when the time is up. But because this is online and we want to make sure that in case we have some technical difficulties, uh, you heard from the movie that we made as always, can you hear me, are you there mute? So to avoid all of that for the online event, we actually have pre-recorded pitches what the teams have been working on the entire week and weekend, like one of them complained. So now we're actually going to be playing the pre-recorded pitches per team. And then after that, they will have a brief five minutes Q&A session with the jury members. And then we're going to do that until we have all of them done. So we want to start with team one. Team one was the case that was working on the sustainable empowerment of local community on cleaning rivers. And that is the case that was sponsored by the Duzi Umgeni Conservation Trust together with Blue Dell South Africa. And the focus river for that um, initiative is, of course, the Umsunduzi River. So over to my colleague to play the recorded pitch for Team One. Who does not love a clean flowing river? Well, the sad part is most rivers in South Africa are currently contaminated due to littering and illegal waste disposal, Umsunduzi River being one of them. EnviroChamps are a group of volunteers that work closely together with multiple stakeholders such as Ungeni Water, Duct, and local municipalities. Their duties or activities include sewage monitoring, rep reporting of fresh water leaks, and riverside walks, with the aim of keeping the river clean. Now, it is very important that the program of EnviroChamps is financially sustainable. How can we achieve this? We can achieve this through the use of an app called EnviroPel. EnviroPel is a multifunctional mobile application that uses a point-based system to rank and reward EnviroChamps. The app can be used for recording data, uploading pictures of any issues identified on site during an inspection, linking with recycling companies, and also linking with universities for data sharing. Now, you can ask yourself, how is this sustainable? Through the use of the app, EnviroChamps will have the incentive of being rewarded for activities performed. Any activity done on the app has a point attached to it. You can even get points for taking steps along the river while you're doing a monitoring session. Each step equals a certain amount of points. The higher the points, the higher the rank. Now, with that being said, that is just not where the app ends. We can also add tutorial videos for any issues that could be linked to the environment. I believe that once the app is launched, we can all go download and become champions of the environment. Thank you so much, Juno, for that. Um, just a reminder to the jury members, um, that was team one. Um, the picture for that was Mashila. So I will now give five minutes to the jury members. Um, for the jury member, when they have a question, um, they can just use the raise your hand. Um, but since your videos are also on, I can see where you are. You can also just do it the old school way. Um, representing team one to handle the Q&A questions, they are also here. Um, and then over to you. Any question from the jury? 
Yes, I over to you, Dr. Naidu. Uh, so I think it's a very, very interesting concept. It's a concept we already use in society. So, so it's very uh, plausible, should I say. Uh, my question, though, is once you get the rewards, who pays? What are we, what, what are we receiving as part of your, your sort of economic model that you're trying to put forward? Um, yes, Sharon, you can answer. Uh, as a team, we created a sustainable business model for the EnviroChamps whereby we listed some of the key partners that we can partner with. So we can partner with uh, supermarkets such as Pick and Pay when you purchase groceries and all that, then you can get rewards. And also, there are, we can also partner with recycling companies whereby the EnviroChamps collect the, the, the waste from the river on their behalf and then in exchange for cash, for instance. And the other main key partner that we mentioned is uh, for instance, partnering with universities such as UKZN that might be in need of the water quality monitoring data from the Omsunduzi River, then the EC will have the information readily available on their Enviro app. And then in that way, in return, the EC can get uh, maybe incentives based on the agreed amount between the two parties, parties as per their service level agreement. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Hank? Yeah, uh, thanks so much, team, uh, for uh, providing this insight. Um, I, I have a, an, um, a question that looks a little bit similar. There is already, uh, what you said is that the Enviro champs are already working at the Umgeni River. And the utility already saved $12,000 in six months. Uh, why do you need the app to capture... Uh, that saved uh, in a risk uh, and would there be other ways uh, that you see or that the app can provide these partnerships between the champs, the water utility, the community, the users and so forth to prevent uh, these uh, uh, pollutions from happening? Anyone? Yeah, I'm, I'm considering the question. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I I lost you on the way in the question. Um, so one, so one is you already saved twelve thousand dollars. So that is a reward. Why do you need the app to capture that? And the second is the app still does not uh, prevent the pollution from happening. Could there, because of your insight and these Enviro champs, be another way to facilitate a process of perhaps collaboration with partners or in another way to incentivize uh, the polluters not to pollute? Uh, now the app is only on the reward of the champs, uh, which is already there, $12,000. Uh, do you need that? And second, can you prevent uh, the pollution from happening? Um, maybe on, on the first one, um, uh, yeah, the $12,000 was saved, but uh, I'm not sure where that money uh, was, uh, or that money was paid out to the ECs themselves, or that it was a combination of what they were saved. And on the second one, um, I think uh, if you go into time, uh, and you and you gather a lot of information. You can start to do data analysis, and you know identify uh, hotspots uh, where a lot of trash is, uh, uh, yeah, get it, and maybe from that uh, try to plan uh, a garbage uh, uh, garbage route where they uh, pick up the garbage, as an as an example. So. First one, first gather and then do the data analysis. And I think this will help in that. Great, thank you, Paul. Um, Sharon, do you want to add? Yeah, also to add on the second question on, on what Paul was answering, we all know that there's like, it's very limited to say you want to prevent uh, pollution. People do pollute in some ways. So the app, the Enviro app will have a, a button or let's say a way that it's going to not notify other people or notify the Enviro champs if there's someone polluting on the side, if there's someone there already. Uh, there'll be people that we call policing people around the community that will have uh, 
that would have English is gone. <laughs> there will be people around the community that would have joined the program during the public awareness, awareness that will be going around. Yeah, teaching people around this the way of the way of keeping the river clean. So those people, the community themselves, will be like the police, the police for the community. If someone sees someone polluting in a way, then there will be a way that they they notify the other people to. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Sharon. Um, excuse one last question from Ellen, and then that will be the last one from the jury. Um, all right. Uh, my question is, um, well, who is actually operating this app? Because what I see here is a business model that addresses kind of the, the citizen side of things. So essentially, you have a sponsorship model where you give kind of sponsored goodies to citizens who might monitor or do things. But the, the things you are saying require quite a lot of work. You need to assign river parts from the, from the challenge uh, to different people. You need to check on the data. You need to redirect uh, garbage trucks. I think also normal citizens can probably not really remove toxic waste just like that. Um, so a lot of organizations has to be involved. A lot of back office kind of uh, operation has to be done. Sponsors have to be won. Uh, where is this side in your business uh, model? How is that financed? Who does that? Mashila? Hello. Um, well, at first we came up with this concept with the aim of um, it being an incentive to bring on more people to actually be champions of the environment. So that aspect of the business model is planned to be incorporated such that we add, um, we contact key partners. For example, we can con contact um, recycling companies that can be linked to the app. And then they are the ones who are in charge of that aspect of recycling. We can also add other multiple parties such as um, companies that actually deal with toxic waste. If there is an issue on toxic waste and EnviroChamp uploads it and that company gets to be called to action. So the aim of the app is more of not just an incentive, but then more of a way of the community and people to easily identify problems, upload them, and easily link with people who can easily assist. Okay. Thank you so much, Mashila, for that. And unfortunately, if any other jury member had another burning question, you can also chat with the team during the networking later on. Thank you so much, Team One. And the Team One representatives were Mashila, Sharon, and Paul. And just so you know, each team is made out of seven members that came together with this innovative solution. Thank you so much, Team One. So we'll now move to Team Two, who were working on a case sponsored by um, Jamplum with the Blue Deal South Africa which is a case that is focusing on the Crocodile River project. And the case was called Look, See, Do, um, which is all about virtual um, reality experience on capacitating staff. So get ready to listen to the pitch from Tim Two. The year is 2020. We're in lockdown due to the coronavirus. You're working from home, relaxed when you get a call. There is a dysfunctional pump at the wastewater treatment plant that only you can fix. This means that you have to leave your home and travel about 50 kilometers to fix this problem. Now, imagine if you could fix this problem without having to leave your home. Sounds amazing, right? Stop imagining. It's already possible through virtual reality. This technology, such as Jumpbloom, has proven its feasibility and adaptability to improve skills and capacity in the water sector. When it was demonstrated, 83% of the personnel said it was user-friendly and it made their work easier. The benefits of using this technology include remote training and assistance, improved information retention with rates of up to 80%. Plants can save up to 33% on training costs as well. Now, you're probably thinking, well, this is an amazing thing. How do we implement something like this? But is Africa ready for it? And I'm here to tell you that not only are we ready, we already have the solution for you. We call it implementation through procurement. This technology can be implemented through the procurement process of new plants or the upgrade of current facilities. 
The technology can be used by planning consultants during the design phase as a visual representation platform to showcase the project to municipalities. Building contractors for the wastewater treatment plants can include the technology on the training of operators. Individualistically, the technology can be further applied to the continuous ma monitoring, maintenance and auditing of water treatment plants within the sector. I mean, this is amazing. Isn't it great to know that with virtual reality, you don't have to imagine? Thank you so much, colleague, for that, um, for playing that video. Um, so that was team two. Great work. Um, and that picture was Garabo Mugwena. Joining her to represent for the hot seat Q&A session with the jury, it's Awadwa Magingi and Lindelwa Um, So now I will give the five minute slot to the jury members. You already know the drill, how to get a slot to ask a question. Yes, I see the head is up. That's a yes. Okay, starting with Ellen. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, great presentation, interesting uh, suggestion. Um, my question is, I think there are very different competencies and skills involved in this kind of training and also to address these kind of challenges. Um, is virtual reality training kind of applicable to all of them or would you have recommendations what kind of trainings would benefit the most and maybe other types of skills or competencies that would have to be addressed in a different way? Team two. Yes, oh, I will do. Okay. Um, so with Loom, you can actually uh, set the training based on what you want to be trained on. We're focusing on wastewater treatment works, um, mainly um, the stuff it can take from management to operators. But the technology can actually be, be used even in universities, in portable water treatment works and any other industry. But just to, to come back to wastewater treatment works, I, um, we think um, jump loom, it can, it can uh, play a vital role, mainly on the technicians and operators, but it will be based on what the municipality requirements are. Like if they, there's a shortage of skills in management, then it can be, it can be um, modified in a manner that it's a training for managers. But if um, it's mainly for operators and technicians, it can also be, be just adjusted to fit that sort of training. So it's quite a, a flexible technology that can be adjusted based on your, on your requirements. I'm not sure if Linda would like to add on that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with what, what our said. Um, it, it, it can be, it, it's, it's a variable system. So you can, you can have different sections because in virtual reality, you have different environments. So maybe one environment will focus on specific training for a particular skill set. The next environment will focus on, on specific training for another particular skill set. And that can be labeled depending on, so the wastewater treatment plant or the municipalities or whoever is in charge of the training can then decide which um, skills are required and then go to the, to the particular environment where the skills can be acquired. Okay, thank you, Awadwa and Lindelwa. Um, Ustasia? Thank you very much. I, I found this uh, pitch very, very interesting, especially in, in the era where we're supposed to be doing blue drop and green drop, and yet we, we're not... We're not really implementing those for various reasons, lack of capacity, lack of, and I wonder if this this um, this uh, this looks to do will will support that type of of work for us. Will it will the department be able to use it and and to get the information required to produce reports? Thank you. Okay, uh, award one. Uh, unmute. Awadwa, unmute. Yes. Sorry about that. That's the problem with working online. Um, I was saying thank you very much for that question. Um, in one of our recommendations, we actually highlight green drop, especially in, in, in wastewater treatment works, because uh, if uh, this technology can be incorporated with the requirements for, for green drop certification, it can, uh, it can work like wonders, you know? So in our recommendations, 
Green Drop is there with other sectors that can also uh, benefit from this technology. But it's one of the, of the key things that we say, even though it might take time for Luxidu to partner with the Department of Water and Sanitation, but it's very important to start the process now, whether it comes from Luxidu organization or from the Department of Water and Sanitation. But it would be great to actually take uh, this technology and use it with the green drop requirements for reporting. Thank you, Awardwa. Um, I also saw a hand from Ashton, which based on the time, that should be the last one from the jury. Ashton. Uh, thanks, Oda. Uh, interesting pitch indeed, and interesting technology to solve the current problem that we have in South Africa. Uh, my question to, to the team is, as young people, you know, the current problem that we have of unemployment and our goal as a country uh, from the government initiatives to create jobs, uh, especially for young people. So looking at this technology and the current traditional training facilities or mechanisms, is it not uh, one of the things that will instead take away jobs uh, instead of giving jobs back to our young people? So is there a comparison in terms of whether is it a job creation initiative or is something that will take away jobs? I'm meaning taking away engineers in training, apprenticeships, and all these other trainings for, for training process controllers. Thank you. Um, Garabo? Um, we actually did look at that feasibility, um, and we found that it actually can help in terms of uh, training more people on the skills that are currently um, not there or the lack of skills and capacity in the wastewater treatment plants, but also not limiting it to the wastewater treatment plants because it can be used in any setting. It's, it's a very variable application or technology rather. So it doesn't just do virtual reality. It, it can also do like 3D modeling and remote training, which is also important. So it can also be applied in any field and it can also be used as a tool by the government to help get more young people get training or get education. Just, just to add on what, what Garabo said, so the, the, the technology doesn't necessarily remove um, um, the physical requirements in the training. It just starts you, it, it starts by a first training you virtually because it has improved retention rates and it reduces the chances of injuries and, and illnesses when you actually go out into the field. In, in, in health, in the health sector, it was used in terms of, because when people have to incubate in the health sector. So instead of just, um, rushing the students to go start the incubator or the workers to go start incubating immediately, rather train them virtually how, of how it works, what the consequences could be if there are mistakes, and then take them into, in, in, into, the, into the actual lab or office and have them do the incubation. So that, that could be the same, it will be the same thing for, 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 virtu for virtual reality. You first capacitate the staff, get them familiar with, with training, get them familiar with the consequences if they if they don't follow the particular rules, and then we take them to the actual training, assuming that they have succeeded in, in, in the virtual reality um, system. Okay, thank you so much, Tim Tu, um, for that. Um, that again was represented by Linda Luandrovu, Awadwa Makingi, with Karaba Mukwena, who was also the pitcher, and the team again is also seven members. Thank you so much for that. Now, last but not least, we'll be going to team three, um, who were working on a case provided by Bluedo South Africa, um, focusing on the Val River project, which is all about um, swamp-friendly water hyacinth harvesting. So you will now hear a pitch from their team member, Masha Mahwale. Imagine an international recognized site with amazing bed life, fish, blue waters being degraded due to the adverse results of pollution and a destructive spreading of invasive species like the water hyacinth. Globally, this weed is known to threaten the biodiversity, the ecosystem functionality, and the socio-economic growth. Techniques have been used before to control these invasive plants, but some of them can hardly be used as a long-term solution or they are expensive. I mean, it was estimated that in South Africa, the cost of controlling these invasive plants exceeds 700 million US dollars per annum. Very costly, right? What if that shouldn't be the case anymore? 
What if I tell you that there are potential benefits of the water hyacinth and more reliable methods which can be used to make financial and environmental returns? So, how are we going to do that? We will collect the water hyacinth from the wetland using the wind, flow, boats and rafts, and use it to make large baskets that will be used as floating water harmonics. The water harmonics will be used to regrow the water hyacinth inside the wetland. In that way, we will be sustainably removing the water hyacinth in the wetland, improving the poor water quality, and restoring the biodiversity, ecological importance, and tourism attraction of the wetland. The water hyacinth has short and long-term uses that the community can use to create income. Short-term includes using it as compost and animal feed due to the high nutrient content. Long-term includes making paper and biofuels. We can make the wetland beautiful again with birds flying, an increased number of tourists, and a better water quality. We are embracing the water hyacinth. Are you? Thank you so much. That was Nasha Makwale from Team Three. Joining her for the hot seat with the Q&A session with the jury, uh, Lutendo, um, as well as Mpo. So I will now give the opportunity to the jury to have their five minutes of Q&A session with the team. So any jury member would like to go first? Yes, okay, I will start with Eustacia. Thank you very much. Um, this is a, this is also a very interesting and a very uh, much needed um, uh, innovative solution for for the South African water water resources. And as you know, we've got many um, dams that are inundated with um, with hyacinths, and every program that we've used hasn't been very effective because it's been expensive, because we haven't managed the communities properly, because we haven't, um, because we're only using maybe um, uh, chemicals or ecological stuff and not the community. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you, in doing this, will you be able to replicate it in, will it be able to be replicated in a bigger wetland, in bigger dams, uh, dam areas? Thank you. Thank you, Asia. Okay, Masha. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, actually, when we were uh, uh, coming out with innovative ways of solving the problem at the BBS wetland, uh, we were even thinking about uh, how this problem is spreading through the entire country and globally. So, yes. We will be able to roll out these techniques to bigger wetlands and, and dams, and it will actually be easier to bigger wetlands and also on, on the dams uh, as well, because there the water will be flowing um, at the high rate or the boats will be able to, to, to move on top of the water, unlike a very shallow wetland like uh, uh, the BBS. Uh, so yes, we will be able to roll this method to other parts of the country that are affected by the water hyacinth. Uh, not knowing if maybe any of my team members want to add on that. Um, yeah, to, to add on what my colleague Masha is saying. Thank you for the question also. Um, we, we've stated that we do have plans for the flowing water and also for the static water, um, where for the flowing water, where the, that will help in pushing the water hyacinth which will <clears throat> make the method for collection or harvesting easier. We will use cages. And then for static water, we will have an option of using cables to sort of push the hyacinth to the shore and also use the rafts to access um, places where you can access the, the water hyacinth. And um, I think um, we, with those two plans or methods, we can be able to access um, both the Static and the flowing, and also the small and the bigger water places. Okay, thank you, Mpo. Um, I will now allow Hank. Thank you, team. Uh, very in inspiring uh, presentation, and uh, <clears throat> I would also say uh, uh, approach. You know, uh, this uh, invasive species, uh, the water hyacinth is, 
um, it feels that your solution is really at the front of where hyacinths are starting to emerge because uh, 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 you uh, and the way you present it uh, you still need um, um, a, um, a riverine system or a flow system where it's not already covered with layers and layers of hyacinth or can you apply it even in these dense situations so that is one uh, uh, is it where hyacinth starts uh, so you you are there at the beginning or can you apply it also in situations where it's very dense? Second question, uh, if so, if this is the solution, uh, knowing that this is a problem across the world, it almost feels like uh, too simple. Uh, but I know uh, uh, we often look, don't. So can you tell a little bit why you came up with a solution the rest of the world did not? Okay, thank you so much, Hank, for that. And then from team two, I will start with Lutendo. Okay, thank you very much for the for the question, Hank. Um, actually, looking at the high dense areas, we also, when we're coming up with this innovation, um, we know that in different areas, it, uh, the high center is also uh, influenced with the with how the flow is and also the eutrophic uh, state of the wetland and also looking at the uh, at the sizes of the wetlands because some some are shallow some are very deep for example like Hartebier's dam so we also looked at long term and short term um, uh, uh, solutions wherein in long term solutions obviously we will need um, a bit of high capital so that we can buy the the boat that will be able to harvest and collect everything you also including um, uh, the, the cables which will be in the fine belt to actually uh, be able to drag all the, the high synth as we know that the high synth is also flowing and going to this uh, second um, uh, question wherein yes it sounds simple but it's not really simple and our approach on this one is involving the community as much as possible because they they actually add on the nutrients in the wetlands and for example looking at the BBS wherein uh, we know that um, most of the of the effluent or the waste treatment plants are being discharged and there's also uh, some acid mine um, exercises that are uh, activities that are going on so it's it's our key is actually to involve the, the the communities from a very foundation level of the community and looking also at um each and every person can take part to different uh, categories for example the youth uh the primary level secondary level um or uh, young adults obviously old age, because we will be involving them in now making revenue for them. So by them using Hisynth to, pro to make products like um, compost, animal feed, um, also some art galleries that they can sell and also furniture, and that will actually give interest in everyone to get uh, to partake in the innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Lutendo, for that. The, I'll only allow the last question from Ellen, and then we'll be done with team three. Over to you, Ellen. Thank you very much. Well, I work in hyacinth infested wetlands, amongst other things, and uh, there in local places, I've met a lot of conservation uh, experts and also local NGOs who are terrified to even say out loud um, that you might turn water hyacinth into any kind of commercially viable product because they say the moment you do that um, the removal will take a back back road and what locals will do is they will take the hyacinth and put it in every single water body they can see every pond and spread it further um, mm -hmm. so while I love the the livelihood component of your proposal I, what makes sure in your proposal that the environmental component of restoring the Ramsar site will actually be achieved Okay. Thank you, Ellen. Um, team three, who has their hand up? Um, Paul, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, in, I, I think my colleague has also mentioned that we, we would like to involve the community from the get-go so that we make sure they understand the importance of doing this. They, they become part of the solution. And I think by making sure that they understand 
the importance of the hyacinth and the also disadvantage of the hyacinth on water, it should help in preventing situation where people will now come and want to take it, want to take over and also try to control on their own. Um, yeah, plans like um, involving younger people from the from the young age where they grow up knowing how this hyacinth actually functions and what it can give, what raw materials you can get from it and also what other product you can get. And also um, we, we, we had an idea of involving the farmers where farmers can use it as animal feed. And we, we hope that farmers also can help in conserving the ideas and how this is going to be controlled um, as, as part of the community themselves and knowing that it's also part of the feed for their livestock. Um, I'm not sure if somebody would like okay. to add. Thank, thank you, Mpo, um, for that. Uh, I'm see two of your teammates have their hands up, but because of time, um, we hope that um, you're able to cover um, that question. So thank you so much to all teams for your pitches. You did an amazing job. And as a supervisor, I could say I'm very proud of you. Uh, which I know that the fellow colleagues are also very much are proud of you. Thank you so much to all teams. Um, as mentioned, the pitches, by the way, for anyone who wants to go to listen to them again, they're already available online. Um, and also for people that maybe are not, uh, are not familiar with the way that we do things at Word Skills, the team do not only work on the pitches, but they also work on their posters. And these posters are also available um, on our Word Skills website. Um, and the judges will be looking also on their posters during their deliberation later on. Thank you so much to all teams. I will only allow one to remember. Um, who has their hand raised up first to just do a quick short reaction, not obviously on the scoring or anything of the teams, but just in terms of the innovations themselves that they've just listened to, to say that um, they sustainable, like, you know, just that short, short, short reaction from any of the jury member uh, without obviously um, I'm going to the detailed one. You will only get the detailed general feedback once the jury has already um, discussed together. So any jury member, first one, First serve, first come, first serve. <laughs> but jury members, no short reaction, Hank. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, um, I, I, I want to say compliments. Uh, I mean, in these challenging times, not being together, uh, really having these very concise, uh, very good pitches and presentations, focus on the, the challenges you faced in the context of your uh, work and coming up with a solution that really is reasonable. I'm not going to talk about numbers and grades and stuff like that, but I really want to applaud you for becoming a team also and standing also in the q and It was like really not knowing that you were not in a room. You really performed like a team. You helped each other in answering the question. So uh, I'm, I'm, that's really impressive. So uh, really thank you. And also, of course, by inspiring us with great opportunities uh, to look into in the challenges we face in the world. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Hank. I will now allow the jury members to go um, deliberate and have a discussion around the innovations. All right, so while the jury members are going for a break to put their heads together and go have a nice argument about the skulls, which I know how that feels, uh, but I can tell you that rest assured, whatever decision they make will be great and a perfect one. Um, all your innovations were great. So now this is a nice time slot for everyone to have a nice break um, of five minutes of grabbing the water or grabbing a drink um, and stretch your legs because we are all have been sitting and looking at this screen. But that, um, okay, without wasting any time, I'd like to give over to Hank together with um, Dr. Varel Naidu, who will do a short jury report. And then immediately after that, they will be announcing the winner for this year's competition. Please note that the Department of Water and Sanitation has prepared a little something for the winners and they'll be getting those couriered to them as from tomorrow, once you obviously know today who are the winners. So um, over to you, um, Dr. Varel Naidu. Thank you. Thank you, Adwa. Uh, 
So I think that, sorry, I, I was trying to look for the camera and <laughs> I think with virtual reality, you've got to get your positioning and timing right. I think firstly, let me just say uh, the jury had a really tough choice. I think the pitches were really well done. And, uh, you know, we found elements of innovation, elements of technical feasibility, quite a lot of thought around the economic feasibility and the business model around it. Uh, we also uh, found that they, mm -hmm. they had a rich mm -hmm. understanding in, 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 in some of the pictures around the socioeconomic issues of, around South Africa. So, so for us, it was a really tough job to do. And uh, I say congra congratulations to everyone and congratulations to, to, the, to those guys that actually delivered the pictures as well, because I think that was well done as well. Uh, I just want to say before moving on that at the end of the day, I don't, while we do have to choose a winner and a loser, uh, I don't want any of the teams to feel uh, in a way that I, I want you to feel competitive because that's life as well. But I don't want you to feel like, you know, this is it. I want you to feel that this is the beginning of a journey, that you have come together, you've been uh, with a team. I hope that in that team that you have pushed boundaries that those team members have pushed your boundaries. I hope you have been able to see that you have immense amount of capability uh, in terms of thinking around solutions, thinking around some of the wicked problems. And South Africa definitely has some of those wicked problems with the water scarcity and some of the pollution issues uh, that, we, that we do have. So um, I don't know, Adwa, whether you want me to announce it or hand over to Henk with those comments, but well done to everyone. And I think all the jury members really appreciated the effort that went in there. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Naidu, for that. Um, Hank is not yet back from his other meeting, so you can proceed um, to do that announcement on uh, sound. And But okay. before you do that, I would like all the team representatives who are, have the access to turn on their video, which means the ones who are doing the Q&As and pitches to turn on your camera so that us and the rest of everyone who's joining us online are able to see your reaction, dancing, and all things that you'll be doing to celebrate the way you know best in your culture. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone has turned it on. Mashila? Yes, thank you. Over to you, Dr. Naidu. So, so guys, I'm, I'm really sorry we can't put some background music and some drum beats here. Um, so I'm going to leave it to your imagination. And since your pitches were so good, I'm, I'm quite sure that you know how to do that as well. So again, very difficult choice, but the jury came to the conclusion that the winner is Team 2. Congratulations to Team 2. Thank you, so you can make some noise like this now. <laughs> yeah! Yes! Team. Congrats, yes! Team. Yes! 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 <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Naidu, for that. Um, and like I said, Tim, too, well done. And as the winners of the competition, you'll obviously be getting um, a small gift from the department um, for your appreciation. Thank you to Ms. Mayer and her team for arranging that on behalf of the department. And obviously, because from day one, Ms. Mayer, um, when the ambassador as well, of Netherlands South Africa did mention that everyone is a winner and all your cases, we're going to do our best to have them followed up with what's next. And guess what? You will all, you getting a certificate, you getting a certificate, you getting a certificate. You will all get your participation certificate for being of the competition because you are now part of the Southern Africa Alumni of West Coast Foundation. Thank you so much to everyone. I will, that is it from my side. Uh, at the end of this, we will pull up the poll. So please do quickly answer that poll briefly before you exit. We'd like to have those from you. Um, and then there will be a social separately, obviously, the way we've been doing it throughout the time. That's it from my side. And I'm now going to be giving to Johan to do his closing remarks. Thank you so much and see you next time. Yes. Well, uh, team two, uh, congratulations. You had a, uh, an, a tough job, what I, uh, what I heard and uh, well, what I read. So thank you. But also the other teams, uh, great job. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the, uh, the jury members um, uh, headed by uh, Dr. Valerie Naidu. Thank you very much for, uh, uh, for your support. Also had the others, Ellen, Hank, um, Ashton and Eustacia. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to really thank the 
Department of Water and Sanitation of Southern Africa, of South Africa, uh, Ms. Verena and her team. Uh, they did so much for this uh, program. Also, uh, the last uh, years, they, they, they executed and they supported our program uh, very much. And I really hope to continue this uh, cooperation for next year, a live event, preferably at WISA uh, 2022. So I, uh, I hope forward to continue uh, our two years live in, in, in South Africa. I would... Also thank uh, Hans Waals and his team uh, on the Blue Deal uh, because, well, hey, you're so supportive to, to wet skills uh, uh, already a long period, hey, the water authorities in the Netherlands, but also now with the Blue Deal, hey, it's, it's a very, uh, uh, well, we cannot do without hey, uh, support as, as you, you, uh, as you, from your organization. I would like to thank... Um, uh, WISA for the cooperation. They are not there this this year, not there. But uh, hopefully we can come uh, go there next uh, next year. The Dutch Embassy uh, for their their working to, uh, cooperation. And last but not least, my team, my team members, Otwa, Joanna, Peter, Fomolo. Thank you very much, and let's keep in touch. Uh, guests online. Uh, well, I hope to, that you have uh, had a great um, uh, afternoon session. Uh, let's keep in touch, uh, all of you, and to the participants, welcome to the Wet Skills family. Thank you. Um, thank you, Johan, for that. Um, can we have the poll up so that people can put in their votes as they leave? Um, those who can spare us at least a minute of your time. 